Hey, SLO Con. In the next couple of minutes, I want to talk to you about SLOs for quality gates, integrating it into a delivery pipeline. My name is Andy Grabner. I do work for Dynatrace. My Twitter handle is at GrabnerAndy. I'm very passionate, though, about an open source project called Captain, which I will also showcase you on how Captain is a reference implementation for SLOs for quality gates. But I really want to talk about the concept of this because I think we can do more with SLOs than just production monitoring, reporting, and alerting. So let's get started. I've been working in continuous delivery as an engineer, as a performance architect for many, many years. And I know that we all want to enable more automated quality gate checks in continuous delivery, whatever CI, CD tool you're using. However, what I see most organizations do is you're running a big new release, you are hopefully deploying automatically, then hopefully you run some automated tests, but then where it often falls short, especially as you're pulling in more data from different tools, whether it's your security scanning tools, your functional test tools, your performance testing tools, your observability tools, it's really hard to automate the analysis across all these different tools. And therefore, we see a lot of people building dashboards or looking at dashboards in the different tools and then manually analyzing them having people there that in the end need to go and look over multiple metrics, multiple dashboards, and eventually coming up with thumbs up or thumbs down. Now, while this is a doable approach, it doesn't scale. It's not consistent because what if your expert is not here one day, right? So maybe somebody else needs to step in and they don't know what metrics to look at. Well, first of all, as I said, this is an error prone approach and it is long. So what we think we should do is we should leverage the momentum we have, the movement around SLOs about defining critical indicators, metrics, and what we are, what our expectations are, right? We, we're doing this now in production, but why not just leverage the same thing in pre-production as quality gates? And this is why I strongly believe if we are shifting left and bringing the concept of SLOs into the minds, into the heads of everyone that is dealing with continuous delivery, we can solve the pain of changing a manual approach of enforcing quality gates. We can change it to fully automation, which then means it's consistent and it's much faster. So let me give you an example. We all know SLIs and SLOs, hopefully by now, if not, make sure that you watch a lot of the other videos. But in the end, the way we want to do this is you can specify important SLIs that you want to enforce as part of your quality gate, whether this is response time, failure rates, response time of a particular transaction you're testing, number of database calls, number of backend service calls. You specify your SLIs the metrics that are interesting for you that you want to automatically evaluate. They can come from one tool or different tools. Then you specify your SLOs. These are the objectives. If you know your objective in production and you know what type of load and tests you run in pre-prod, you can probably infer or figure out what are your SLOs in pre-prod so when you ship it in production, this will all be good. I, we also think here there should be a combination of static thresholds and also dynamic thresholds or relative thresholds where you can compare to a previous build. I just gave you some examples here of pass and warning thresholds. What's also important, we are analyzing multiple different metrics. They may be weighted equally or maybe not, right? I think we also wanna make sure that you can mark individual metrics as key metrics or give one or the other a different weight. In the end, it's important that as we look across all the list of different SLIs and SLOs, we calculate a total score that we can normalize between zero and 100. So we can easily then say, if we reach a certain score, let's say 80, 90%, then we are green. If we are between 90 and 75, it's a warning. If we are below 75, it might be an issue. So how does this then work? If build number one comes along in your pipeline and you run your test and then you are pulling out all the metrics from the different tools and compare it against the SLOs, you can easily grade everyone individually and then calculate a total score. If build number two comes along, the developers making code changes, all of a sudden response time is slower. There's some failure rate in here, which means they're getting penalized. Now we only got 75%, which is a warning. 
Well, you may still leave this lettuce in production, but maybe the developer immediately goes back and says, ah, let's fix this right away. They fix it, build number three comes along, build, deploy. Now we pull out the metrics. We see, yes, they have solved the response time issue. Failure rate is down to an acceptable level. However, it seems that for login, which is a key transaction, response time went up. And most importantly, now this function is making more calls to the backend system as we anticipated. This is also great for architectural validation. Why did the login transaction, who used to only make one call to the backend system, maybe the database or the authentication system, why is it now making two calls instead of one? So you're getting automatically penalized and therefore immediately report back to your engineers something is wrong. Build number four comes along, everything is good. And now we're back in the game. So this is what we're promoting, using the same concept of SLIs and SLOs, but in your delivery. The time frame, obviously, that we're evaluating here is always the time frame of your deployment of your tests that are running. Now, Captain is the open source project that I'm advocating for. Captain provides a reference implementation of this, where you can specify SLOs, meaning what type of data points, what type of SLIs do you want to compare against which criteria, then also an overall score. What we've done, and there's another talk from me around SLO as, uh, as code, we are separating SLIs and SLOs so you can easily swap the underlying tool or can include different data sources for an SLO evaluation. And then we do have you know, some UI, obviously, uh, that is then also visualizing the data but Captain takes care of it. Now it's just a reference implementation. So feel free to check out what we do. Um, get the idea at least, right? Shift left, the SLO concept. Make sure you're also advocating for it in pre-production to speed up your quality gates. And just one user that has been doing this is Christian. They have a GitLab as a pipeline, but instead of doing manual verifications after the tests, they are now triggering a quality gate in Captain where the SLIs and the SLOs are defined as YAML files stored in Git. But now every time the pipeline runs, they automatically get the evaluation consistently against indicators that are important. Now, if you wanna learn more on how we do it, um, check out uh, the stuff we have out there on the open source project. Uh, but I think in general, what I want to make sure is Start thinking beyond just production monitoring. Start thinking about how, what can we do to also make the life easier of the people that are responsible for continuous delivery? How can we get developers faster feedback also on SLIs and SLOs that are later relevant in production? Thank you so much.